Hello, I'm Jeff Baxter, CEO of BBI Banksy. We are thrilled and excited to be able to share additional data from the ongoing Phase 1 2A study of VBI 1901, our cancer vaccine immunotherapeutic in patients with recurrent glioblastoma. I'm joined here today with David Anson, our Chief Scientific Officer. Thanks, Jeff. The data we're going to discuss briefly is being presented this weekend by Dr. Andrew Lastman at the Society for Neuro-Oncology Annual Meeting. Great. Thanks, Dave, for framing that. So we periodically announce data from VBI 1901 plus GMCSF study on, but this is the first time that we're announcing data from the VBI 1901 plus GSK's ASO1B adjuvant system. Before beginning, I'd refer you to the press release we issued this morning, November the 19th, 2020, for more details, as well as to disclaimers shown on this slide regarding forward-looking statements and additional disclosures. Before I hand back to Dave, who will review some detailed data, a brief introduction to VBI 1901 and the study design. Throughout the two phases of the study, we've continued to conduct detailed biomarker analysis to better understand the tumor responses we've seen, with the hope that we can better identify patients most likely to respond to the treatment in future studies. Phase one of the study saw meaningful improvement in the 12 month and median overall survival with evidence of stable disease in three patients in the high dose cohort. As we expand into phase 2A, the extension phase, we continue to see encouraging tumor responses across, across both arms. We have now seen two partial responses and seven stable disease observations, which is clearly very, very encouraging for these patients and for the potential of 1901 in the treatment of GBM. Over to you, Dave. So what you can see here are what are commonly called spider plots, and they measure the growth of the tumors in these patients. What you can see in both uh, panels shown in black are the typical uh, growth of tumors. It's clearly a very aggressive uh, tumor, doubles in size typically every six to eight weeks. What's captured in orange are those uh, patients that have uh, experienced tumor responses measured in terms of stable disease, meaning about three months or more where there is no tumor growth, partial response in which it's decreased by 50% or more, or complete response where it's completely eliminated. What you can see is that in the GMCSF arm, we've had uh, two patients with stable disease and very encouragingly, two patients with partial responses. It's interesting to note that one of those patients uh, initially looked like the tumor was increasing in size, but ultimately that uh, shrunk uh, down by greater than 50%. That was likely uh, the immune system infiltrating the tumor early on, what's called pseudoprogression, but ultimately gave rise to an elimination of, of, as I said, greater than 50% of the tumor mass. What you can see in the bottom panel, a similar spider plot uh, for patients treated with uh, the 1901 candidate with GSK's ASL1B adjuvant. Again, very encouragingly, we have five patients with evidence of stable disease, some of them, again, with evidence of pseudoprogression. Uh, the majority of these patients are still on protocol, so we wait to see if ultimately some of those uh, convert into partial responses. What you can see here on this slide are some biomarkers that we identified in Part A of the trial, which, at least for the GMCSF arm, uh, predicted uh, those individuals most likely to uh, experience tumor responses. Now, given the limited number of patients in Part B, you can see it's really just a trend here. But if you look at the totality of data uh, in the GMCSF arm, which is shown on the SNOW poster, you would see that there really is a very significant correlation between a normal CD4 to CD8 ratio, which is about uh, above about three, and those individuals that have tumor responses. When we looked at that biomarker in the context of the ASL1B arm, uh, it very clearly on the right-hand side, there's no correlation or association. Uh, the way we're interpreting this uh, is that this deficit, this immune deficit, this lower ratio of CD4 to CD8 T cells can be overcome due to the potency of uh, GSK's ASL1B adjuvant. And so you can get tumor responses even in patients that have lower ratios that are a little bit less immunologically fit at the start of treatment. 
So in summary, we've observed two partial responses in the GMCSF arm of uh, the trial, uh, with an additional seven uh, tumor responses across both that uh, arm as well as the ASL1B arm. Disease control rates of 40 and 56 percent uh, across those two arms, very encouraging. And we've determined that the ASL1B adjuvant can potentially overcome known immune deficits uh, within these uh, patients. Great, thanks Dave. So in terms of next steps, we're actively exploring options in the next phase of development, which includes randomized controlled clinical studies, including registrational studies, and pending conversations with regulatory bodies, the next stage of development could initiate in 2021. Now that study could take the form of, or is more likely to take the form of VBI 1901, plus an adjuvant as a monotherapy, but also could include in combination with, say, checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1, etc. Until then, we will continue to have tumor and immunologic data updates from the current ongoing Phase 1, Phase 2A study, and look forward to providing updates on both study arms in the first half of 2021. Now, as Dave mentioned, GBM, and specifically recurrent GBM, is an incredibly aggressive disease. And as I hope you can tell from this presentation today and the energy in the delivery of the presentation, we're excited and working hard to be able to provide an option to patients who currently have very few. Thank you.